thanks to Tim Bowles and Tim Boyer and Tim Casey and Bob Shemansky and, well, y'all know who I'm talking about, if I'm talking about you. But thanks to all of you guys, I've cleaned off my wing bench and um, I'm about to start working on my wing again. There's my right wing. Here's my left wing. Not going to do a lot of videoing on my left wing. Uh, I've done so much videoing on my right wing and uh, previous wings from years ago. So, but I just wanted to share that I'm getting back on it. And maybe a little bit about the method I use. I set my spars up on jacks. Put a little clamp there just to make sure it doesn't come off the jack. Slide my ribs across. Of course, you got to remove all your hardware and then you do a, put a straight edge line across it. Measure a foot each. Right there, you see my spar cut into my spar. And uh, you can't really slide the ribs over your strut attach point. Not very well. Not if you've made your ribs rather tight. So you got to slide five of them on from the end of the wing and nine of them on from the root end of the wing. And what I like is that it's really snug, real tight fit on the backside. I, I cut mine at an angle. So instead of cutting a square, I've got the taper of the rib, the wing uh, the airfoil on here so it's real snug you slide over but you don't have to shim it The next step is going to be putting the trailing edge on, in which case we want to set it down flat on the table so that we can have the trailing edge coming straight out from the ribs. And it's not critical that the table is perfect. My table's not quite perfect. That's why I built it up like this. But for this, we'll just set it down on the table. And the uh, only thing that'll be glued to the ribs will be the trailing edge. Once we get the trailing edge on it, then we're going to put it back up on the jacks and then we are going to level the jacks. Not across this way, that's not critical, but this side has to be perfectly level and that side has to be perfectly level. Whether or not, whether or not they go up or down that way doesn't matter, it's only gonna be fractions of an inch but this way if they're both of them are level and then we make sure they're square and we do that by this line on the table the straight edge over here and the trailing edge and I have a line for my trailing edge on the table you can see that so between all of them I'm going to make sure it's square and both spars are perfectly level with one another and, uh, and then we can just start putting geodetic on it. Well, we'll start by gluing the ribs to the spars. Then we'll put the geodetic, start putting the geodetic. Now, the first thing I wanna do, since I have kind of a double line, well, I guess you can't really tell that it's double. Anyways, I can see, yeah, there you go. 
I'm going to go ahead, it's, it's just a fractions of an inch, but a fractions of an inch here, translate out there at the far end to that much, that might be three eighths of an inch. So I guess that's not much either, but still I want it nearly perfect. So what I'll do is I'll measure up four feet that direction and I'll measure up four feet or measure out here, this should be right at, well, just under four feet. So whatever this distance is, I'm gonna measure up that distance and I'll do the side opposite and it should come out dead nuts. When you're trying to do super accurate measuring, even with a tape measure, you don't wanna use the end, whether it's pressed in or pulled out, you don't wanna use the end. What you do is just slide up 10 to 10 inches and you use that line and you can look down well let me get the camera in front of that line you look right down that line and you can get that line within ten thousandths of being perfect right on there and you hold it right there and then go out and read where you're trying to to measure and subtract 10 inches and uh, that way you're way more accurate Well, it's supposed to be 64 and just over an eighth, and this is 64 and just under an eighth. So that's not perfectly square. That line should be a little bit further out. So I moved it to the uh, outer line of that double line, and it is right at an eighth. Therefore, of these two lines, it's this nearer line that is square. And just to be honest, I'm a machinist. That's why I'm doing this. This would not make any difference in your wing, even transmitted clear out there 13 feet. Because this here, that's, that's about 50 thousandths over four feet. So if you multiply 50 thousandths by uh, not even four times, three times, that's 150 thousandths. So just over an eighth of an inch is all it's going to be either forward or back. Well, that'd be tilted forward. An eighth of an inch over 13 feet. So that doesn't matter. And incidentally, that's one of the things I have to battle when building these things, like you saw me sliding these on and they're so snug. Well, this one's a little loose, but most of them are so snug that I have trouble, difficulty sliding them on. And then look how tight that is, just hanging there. And I have to slide that on, nice tight angle. You don't have to have any of that. I do it just because I like things tight and snug. Uh, you, Both of these, are typically they sh they show you building it with a gap here and then you put it you shim you put shims underneath it I just don't like to do that so I just I just make everything fit nearly perfect and of course before you do any gluing you always want to put down plastic wrap Here's a couple things that could screw you up if you don't pay attention. And that is, if you lay it down here, everything looks perfect, right? You start gluing it, and then you realize you've got the gap, this gap at the top here, because you have this up, you have your trailing edge upside down. Let me look at the end here, there. See that? So you just got to flip it over. Here's the other thing. See this nice long eight footer? Looks like it should go on this inboard side. Here's the root of the wing. No, no, no. Your aileron is eight foot. The inboard side is the five foot piece. Now at this point, it's not important that anything is square, but that the joint are very solid. Now you'll see on the end here, I can draw that one in real tight because I'm just pushing in against the side and drawing it in. I'll put a clamp from back here 
I'll put a clamp right across there and it'll also be drawing it in. Now here, I got a nice tight joint. Here, nice tight joint. Nice tight joint. Not. So right there, I'll need to put a shim in there. Something that makes that very snug. And of course all of them. I'll draw them in like this. And then I'll make them even. Right here with the top of it. And, uh, yeah, go right on down. Do it with all of them. Next thing you do is you dry fit everything. So if you've got any loose joints, you go ahead and get shim stock to make those joints tight. One thing I always keep is cullings off the uh, table saw. I don't care how thin they are. Sometimes you need something almost paper thin. Um, and I've got lots of it hanging and drying and these are just the cheap uh, Walmart clamps little bar clamps or you can get about four and a half five inches length out of them they work really good for stuff like this all the way down come on Oops. but there you can see put a little shim in there and uh, there's one in there too I broke it off and there's one I didn't break off yet, but all the way down, it's all finished.